Hello. Today we're going to focus on quasi-linear utility functions. To start, let's look at this example of an increasing marginal rate of substitution problem. First, we have our utility function, x1 cubed plus x2. We see right away that the one of our terms is nonlinear, while the other is linear. This makes us this makes this utility function a quasi-linear function. Additionally, we have information about the prices, $5 per wrench and $2 per engine, as well as a $10 budget for the two goods. Let's try to find our utility maximizing points for both wrenches and engines. First, with a quasi-linear function, we're gonna take our MRS of our utility curve. Again, that's marginal utility of x1, or good 1, over the marginal utility of good 2. The marginal utility with respect to good 1 would be the partial derivative of that utility function with respect to good 1. That's going to be 3x1 squared. I'm going to place this over the partial derivative with respect to x2, which in this case is just 1. So we're left with 3x1 squared as our marginal rate of substitution. Before we continue, we have to do something called the MRS test. The MRS test has us see what happens to our marginal rate of substitution as good one, the amount of good one we purchase increases and the amount of good two we purchase decreases. Depending on the answer to these two questions, we will see an increasing marginal rate of substitution, a decreasing marginal rate of substitution, or a constant rate of substitution. Let's analyze this MRS. In this case, our MRS is 3x1. As x1 increases, our marginal rate of substitution increases. As x2 decreases, nothing happens to our MRS. I'll denote that as a horizontal arrow. This means that put together, we have a net increasing effect on our MRS. So our marginal rate of substitution is increasing. In the event that we find an increasing MRS, we should solve this problem similar to a perfect substitutes type utility function problem. This means we're going to figure out what happens if I purchase all of one good or all of the other, and which gives me the higher utility. So first, let's build out our budget constraint. Our budget constraint again is P1x1 plus P2x2 is equal to income. Plugging in the points that we have available to us, that means 5 times x1 plus 2 times x2 equals 10. If I'm to zero out the amount of good 2 we purchase, and say we purchase all of good 1 instead, we're left with 5x1 equals 10. So x1 equals 2, x2 equals 0. If I'm to zero out how much of good 1 we purchase and purchase all of good 2 instead, I'm left with 2x2 equals 10, or x2 equals 5, and x1 equals 0. Let's compare our utilities. We'll call this point A and this point B. The utility under point A can be found by plugging in the point 2, 0 into our utility function above. If we have two units of good 1, we're going to put that in for the x1 variable here, 2 cubed, and then we're going to add 0 to that. So our utility under point A is 8. Compare this to point B. 
our utility will be plugging in x1 as 0 and x2 as 5. So our utility under point B is 5. Seeing as point A yields the greater utility, we should go with that for our optimal bundle. This means our answer would be 2 units of good 1 and 0 of good 2.